Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk you through a couple of use cases and examples on how you can leverage the new DAX query view built into Power BI Desktop. Now I had Jeffrey Wang, who's the creator of the DAX language, essentially on one of my live streams at the end of December in 2023, and that inspired me to do a short tutorial video on a couple of ways to actually kind of break down the code and leverage the DAX query view. So I'll also link you to the live stream that I did with Jeffrey below, but otherwise let's hop into Power BI and see how we can break down some measures. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna walk through the sales per day ranked calculation that you see here. The goal of this measure is actually to try to rank every single one of these dates and their sales amounts. So I would like to know for the 101, or the 79,000 or any of these calculations, what is its rank? As we can see, it's not working correctly here. So let's walk through how I can use the DAX debugger to try to fix my measure that isn't currently working. So if I open up the measure, we can see that it is doing a rank X of all the calendar dates uh, for sales in descending order, skipping ties. But basically something is wrong with this measure that I need to debug or kind of look into. All right. so. I'm going to use the DAX query view to do this. I'm going to come over to the performance analyzer, clear these out. I'm going to refresh the visuals on the page. The sales detail is the table that I would like to look at. So opening that up, there's a new button in here if you have this turned on in preview. So under file options and settings, there is a preview option to turn on the DAX query view. If you're using the November or December release of Power BI Desktop, if you're using a later build that um, a good chance it's eventually going to be out of preview by then, but just in case. So with that on, you will see the run in the DAX query view. I will click that. And a new query down here showed up at the bottom. And what that gives you is the entire query that was built for that visual. Now, there's some things that I'm going to kind of call out and then eventually build upon to simplify this a little bit. It's the same thing that you can also analyze in DAX Studio. But Basically, what I want to look at and analyze is this core table that's inside of there to generate the year, quarter, and date, and then sales and that ranked calculation that I have. So I've broken this down in a saved query that I have over on sales per day ranked breakdown. I'm going to select that. We have the calculation in here. Now, as part of this code block, a couple of practices that I like to do is I do, if I'm going to save this for later evaluation, I like to save the measure name and the original calculation at the top that's been commented. And notice that we have some new tools where we can format, comment, uncomment, find, replace, some other stuff that's useful for code, but that allows you to paste stuff into here and very quickly comment or uncomment that out. So that's just saved there for reference. And then I parsed through a few different steps. So on this area here, I'm going to run this and Let's walk through each of these. So there's a simplified version of the visual query output. So basically that VS core query, that's just the table that is result one of five that is right here using that evaluate statement. Now going into kind of the concepts of this, this operates similarly to DAX Studio where you can define items, you can evaluate them, but essentially each result down here relates to an evaluate as long as you're returning some type of a table. So that policy in DAX Studio, where you use the row function to create a one column, one row table with your measure output, same principle would apply here if you're doing that. But I specifically want to look at the tables that are kind of generated by the query in the back end to help figure out what's wrong with my rank calculation. So this is my original thing that is in the visual that is in the report layer. And now for uh, result number two down here, this, I basically swapped out the measure for the rank X function itself. So the original calculation inside of the measure. That's result two of five. We can see that that one is being returned, which is the incorrect amount. So now going to my third step and kind of breaking this down, using max X to see if the rank calculation can actually see sales amounts for other dates. So I want to see per row, what is the, the max sales amount that it could hopefully look across to compare to. Ideally, I would be giving a single max value for every single row because this calculation needs to be able to look at other days of sales for it to know the correct rank for it. Otherwise, that's why they're all getting ranked one. So that is result number three. So the exact value per day is the max per day. So this is essentially indicating that there is a filter right now happening for calendar date for the comparative values that is causing some issues for the rank function. Um, I need to be able to scan across all of these 
um, different dates to have a proper rank among everything. Is this the 25th best-selling day, the 14th best-selling day, so on and so forth. So repra replacing values with all selected, that is the fourth result that is calculated down here. I'm just making a little bit of changes to the code. And the way I'm doing this, honestly, is each time I want a new step, I'm just coming down, copying and pasting my code and just making slight modifications. So result number four, that is the max X function with the all selected. We can now see that I'm getting a consistent top value. And I will see knowing the data that this is um, the greatest sales that I ever had in a single day for this data set. So using all selected versus values, both returns a single column distinct table, but this ignores filters from calendar date, which is great. So now coming to the fifth and final calculation down here, let's see what happens if I update my rank and replace the value with all selected. So number five down here, beautiful. We're getting now a number of a proper rank of the sales ranked against every other sales day. So the 16th best selling day for sales, the 432nd, so on and so forth. And this is all saved in the query view, by the way. So I don't have to have hidden pages to do debugging or development. All the queries and notes and anything I want to can all be saved into here for future reference for me or any other developer I give this to. And we have a nice little option where we can actually view using the pane over here. Um, we can go between wherever essentially any of those code blocks are for each of the evaluation sections. Very useful to save a lot of code and notes in the PBIX file that's never visible on the report layer. Now, one other example that I wanted to walk through is this other page that I have here, which is the DAX query view for customer rank. Basically, what I wanted to do is I wanted to calculate the only uh, sales only for the customer each month that had the best selling sales. So this is my original sales amount. You can see there's a much lower threshold here, but the single best selling manufacturer, better said, in January sold $297,000 and then 204, 193. So we can actually see that between January and May, the single best selling manufacturer, whomever that was, the, the values were going down, but that's what I'm trying to calculate. This 291, is adjacently related to this 291 for Contoso. So I can visually spot check this here, but I had to build two visuals on a page. This could have been a hidden page that I built for development. I don't wanna to have to use visualizations to do this anymore. I can now do the same thing again with that query view. So I've already built that out as an example number two, top selling manufacturer per month. So I have again, just the measure that has been commented out at the top with all of these complex logic and everything. And I'm not gonna go into how the measure was written. That's a conversation for another day, but just how do I break down the measure in terms of its parts? If I'm wanting to do a quick comparison and have a table for debugging saved in the query view. So this first result is an evaluate of the summarized columns for year and month and year. It's basically that left visual that we just saw and give me the sales for top manufacturer per month. So I'm just running my measure to actually see at the month level, am I getting the correct sales amount for that top manufacturer? There's an additional add of the order by. You might have noticed that in query one, if you scroll all the way to the bottom in here, this is something that is automatically added by the visual whenever you do a sort on any of the columns at the top. Now, coming back to the top selling manufacturer for months, scrolling down here, we have that first stage here. The evaluate with the order by, as I mentioned, that is automatically generated, but I coded that myself because I wanted to see the latest calendar date. So that's 12 1 2023, the latest month and year. And there's the 245, 245,000 top selling manufacturer dollar value. Result number two, that if I come down is looking per manufacturer per month and year and whatever their original sales value is. So this is my spot check that I can do between the two of them. I'm looking for 245,000 here for December 1st, 2023, basically December as the month. So I can come to the December month here, which also has the same sort date. And I can see that that 245 matches up with this one. At least I can do a spot check between that. But now, instead of having that saved page, I now have a saved tab in the query view. So I keep my development notes, the ability to walk through and debug, but it is now kind of kept further in the back end of this file rather than more in the front end, which you have those hidden pages for. So I personally really love these uh, the design of this. I think there's a lot of potential for this to continue to grow um, and going forward. 
I see a lot of use cases and I will continue to probably save a lot of tabs to add notes for myself and any client that I'm delivering this to. Um, but hopefully this is something you found useful that you can incorporate into your development. As always, drop some comments down below if you have any suggestions or ideas around this or for any future videos. And always check out in the upper left some of the uh, related videos that I have to offer. But otherwise, comment, like, and subscribe. will continue to help my channel grow. And otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.